Welcome to the Dragon Hike and Fly guys where it's a little breezy. If you find the right place in the in the lee side, uh, you get little patches of no wind. Check this guy out. But on this side of the hill. Say that to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dragon, mini dragon, yeah. ready to go. Ah, <laughs> so I've got Padam here. Yes, he's looking Hello. dangerous because he's ex-army Gurkha. Yeah, strong and tough as nails. Yeah, he could put an elephant on his back and still run. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, he yeah, takes he a slightly more casual approach. That's right. Yeah. The gentleman's approach. He's got all the all the pubs marked out on the route. Yeah. <laughs> Two hours to the first pub, Lewis. Oh, is that right? Yeah, okay, you got a lot of stuff okay, before. All right, that's it. I've got my motivation now. <laughs> And good morning. Our Southeast Wales chairman, Seb. Yeah, looking Compliment. forward to rubbish bag <laughs> because you've seen the weather. <laughs> it's not looking pretty. <laughs> and oh, we, we're trying to catch Daniel Cardmore. <laughs> Who is cheating. Who is cheating because <laughs> look at these. He's cheating. He's got long legs. That's not fair. He should have a handicap. <laughs> and and a hanky. In the and back. he's got a little hanky in the back, a 16 square meter Susie. Um, apparently there's also a reserve and a harness in there. Maybe we should do an equipment inspection. <laughs> Let's take it out of the bag and lay it all out on the ground. <laughs> there was no mention of carabiners. <laughs> <laughs> and late arrival, fly bubble team member, Alex. They're just in time. <laughs> just in time. <laughs> to run along the road and look at the sky and wish we could fly. Most of us have all got XC gear. Some pilots have got teeny little rags. <laughs> and I've got to kind of squish down uh, Omega XL. Um, hopefully we get out. We're, uh, we've currently got a cold front going over and that stuff there is post frontal. So hopefully it will weaken a bit with wind strength and we can get to fly. There we go, right here are the 10 bold athletes. Ready. The mini dragon hike and fly one day race. They got seven hours. They got to go in five, four, Three, two, one, race! So here's Daniel Starsmore out in front, leading the pack. Second front. Oh no, I'm supposed to be in front. <laughs> Catch that rabbit! <laughs> Easy run along the canal towpath. It's uh, lovely and flat in the shade, so we're just keeping a steady pace and jogging along, trying to conserve energy for later in the day. Go for him! Go for him! <laughs> I'll get you running, Winsor. <laughs> I've got a very light pack. My full flying gear is down to 10 kilos, and Daniel's pack's a bit lighter than that. And I do have some training running um, with this load, so it's become comfortable for me. It wasn't comfortable in the beginning, but this is uh, just to get to the hill quickly. Sometime later. <laughs> this is what they call hammer time. <laughs> you come out with Greg and you run the first 12 kilometers to the first standpoint. <laughs> That's hammer time. I'm just trying to keep up with him. <laughs> first turn point. Up the first hill. So now we're coming out of the head of the valley and we're get, getting to this small hill, small ridge, which is a perfect place to test out flying on a strong wind day because we've got safe escape routes from this hill and I'm pretty confident that if I'm here and I can feel the wind, I can fly very safely here in strong conditions. 
um, before making my decision on following the whole route in the air. Possible to fly here. Very gusty. I stopped just to briefly to check out the conditions on the way up to the top, decide against launching in the trees, and stop in a nice clear area up the top here. I suppose it's all about balancing risk with reward. Could have launched off there, but it looked very turbulent behind the trees. Um, if I could have been sure that I could clear the trees, I would have gone for it, but it's a chance that you get a big collapse just after launch and then you're in those trees. So I think wind strength's not too bad. I'm just gonna go ahead and find a more clear slope. All right, typical hike and fly racing random launch. I have to try and work out if it's flyable. Wind's coming in from good direction. I'm not feeling any particularly strong gusts. It's quite changeable, quite gusty. But I think it's good. So now I'm just trying to get a feeling of the wind. I'm not in any hurry because the wind's very strong and I want to be sure that it is actually flyable. And while I'm unpacking my gear, uh, it seems to be getting stronger and gustier. So I'm in no particular hurry. Um, I can always pack everything back in the bag and follow Daniel. So as you can see, it's pretty gusty. Um, I'm not too happy with the conditions. I think I might wait a little bit. Wait until it's got a steady, calm phase. But it's a bit crossed on the ridge, which helps a bit. And then suddenly I can feel there's a cycle. The wind has dropped. That takes a bit of time to develop the uh, sensitivity of what the wind's doing. I've walked out onto enough slopes and, and flown in enough conditions to know whether it's flyable or not. And there is Greg's up. So we've got our first pilot airborne, how exciting. And Greg will be looking for a climb now. And if he gets up, he's away. And this judgment call here was spot on. I took off and I had a little bit of penetration, forward speed, just hands up without using speed bar. Just right. Um, pretty much zero without bar. I'm on a very fast glider. I can use my speed bar and accelerate about 18 kilometers an hour from trim. So that gives me a good safety margin to work this sort of a hill. So the trick here is to not get stuck up in the venturi, the compression right at the top of the hill where the wind will accelerate. So I'm moving forward and out in front of the hill so that if I hit some lift, I can work it without getting pushed back over the hill low. So I'm searching in front, looking for something. I've got a nice escape route off to my right, if the wind's too strong. And I'm not too concerned about rotor off the back of this hill because I've already got enough height here to clear that. If I flick downwind, I'll be out of the bad area, which would be around where the forest is. So now I'm just thermaling and holding onto it as long as possible. You can see it's very flat as it gets to the top of the climb, but I'm holding onto it as long as possible to get me part way across this transition. And now gliding across, I've got just enough height to come in and soar on this next ridge. So now I'm gonna be a little bit more careful because the ridge is bigger. So it pushes me higher up into the stronger wind and I'm stopping fairly early as soon as I feel the ridge lift engage and I'm pushing out there and just testing the wind. I have a very cautious approach here. Um, the turn point is up on the right of the picture where the little trails cross. There's a trig beacon there. But 
I can't fly there at the altitude that I'm at safely because if I go in there, again, we've got that Venturi effect on the top of the ridge. The wind will accelerate over the top and I've got pretty much no forward speed at, uh, with my hands up here. If I'm just putting my hands up and gliding, the wind is holding me back and I've got one or two k's an hour over the ground. You'll notice when I hook a little bit of a climb and do a 360 in it, um, I get pushed back to the ridge there very quickly. Okay, I'm losing ground very fast. So I'm working right out at the edge of this forest. I don't want to get anywhere near the top of the ridge. Um, even though the turn point is sitting up there, I don't want to get trapped and then stuck on the top and have to land in strong wind near the top or just over the back. So the only way to solve this puzzle is to fly way out front. You can see there I've gone back to the ridge just to maintain and get some height again, but that's as far back as I can go safely at this altitude. I need more altitude to go over this ridge safely. And I'd suggest if you're flying and your trim speed is uh, equal to the wind speed, in other words, your ground speed is zero, without using speed bar, it's time to go out and land. Um, I'm opting to continue with this because I think I've got a safe escape route downwind and I'm very comfortable with this terrain. It's very smooth curved slopes, um, unlikely to produce bad turbulence just over the back. See Daniel climbing up there up the ridge. So at this point I haven't lost any time by just hanging around looking for lift. I usually find that if there's any flying to be had it's faster than being on the ground. So sitting way out in front here with no forward speed I am considering just going down and landing and walking because the wind is very strong and if it gets any stronger I think I would pull the plug and just go down and land. But if I can just find a thermal, just need a strong thermal, a strong climb to change this picture and then I'll have the confidence to go over this ridge. At the height I'm at, not enough leeway. I'll pretty much be gliding down in the sink behind this ridge. The cumulus clouds are coming through from upwind, so I can see the air is nice and unstable. There should be some thermals kicking off. So somewhere out here, there should be something. It's a little tricky because the position I'm in is downwind of the lake, so it's unlikely to have good warm air coming over the ground, but something comes through, and there we go. I think this is about two meters a second, two and a half, and you can see the wind is just pushing me over the ridge, but that's fine. I've got enough height now to clear it, so I can go in, hook the turn point cylinder, and now I'm following the high ground to avoid the sinking air. The air can't sink through the ground, so there'll be a channel of wind here where I'm sheltered from that sink, and the sink will only start round about here. Okay, I just hooked the turn point, going straight downwind, it's a bit windy. I'm going to try and stay in the head of the valley so I don't go up onto the main ridge. So that was the best route that I could take to get to the back ridge. And now I've got a bigger mountain. Now I've got to be careful because this wind is really strong. So I don't want to go in and commit myself to a position where I might get blown over the back. I've come in from the side and I'm using the spine as a safety exit route. If the wind, if I turn into wind and I find I'm going backwards, I can bail off to the right of the picture here and get into the valley without going down into the lee and into the rotor. So that's a tester. I've gone back to the ridge and I'm having a look. I'm going to turn back into wind just now and just test again, make sure 
I've got some forward speed and I'm not committing myself to a problem area. The turn point is off on the left of the picture, which really puts me in a committed position. If the wind's strong there, I'm gonna get pushed over into that back valley, which hasn't got any escape runs. So I'm very, very cautious coming in here. And again, I don't wanna get into that Venturi near the top of the ridge. So I'm waiting until I've built up enough height. And I'm also waiting to hook a thermal. There's something that's taking me up to cloud base. So now I've got lots of height. I can go onto full bar. I've got lots of safety, lots of space. And I can crab across, staying in front of the ridge, giving myself safety. And I'm aiming for that escape route that I started off with, this open valley. And now as soon as I know that I can get pushed around the corner safely, I can head off down the valley. And I've avoided any lee sink areas with the associated risks. Yay! Coming into goal. Whew, that was pretty strong up top. That's a, pretty much the limit of what I want to fly on. The valley is nice and wide, so it should be cool in the landing. Don't need any more height. Yeah. Going down there. Now I'm out in the open valley. I have a bit of fun. You'll see when I'm going downwind here, I get onto speed bar just to see how high we can push the GPS speed. And I think it tops out just over 80 at one point, um, which tells you the wind is, space wind is blowing at least 30. And it's all running down this valley. So we can expect it to sort of start focusing as the valley narrows here a little bit. There's a bit of space. Um, but now we are over goal. And I turn into wind here. And we can see that the goal field itself is surrounded by trees. It isn't too pleasant to land there. And I don't like the fact that the wind is so strong. And at some point coming down here, I'm actually drifting backwards at, on trim speed now. So sort of five, six, seven kilometers an hour backwards. So that really needs full speed bar. And I choose to go out for and a much a safer landing, which had, doesn't have trees upwind. And I'll just park here. And I push myself out into this Should open terrain. Down, the best position, I think, for landing in the valley in strong wind. It's a nice plowed field, doesn't have crops in it, and I can safely put it down using my kill switch technique. So I'm staying away from cables and fences and a quick bunch of the glider. I can walk off down the river and back to my landing field. So I hope that's given you some ideas about staying safe in strong wind. You can see my track. Um, the track was dictated by the turn points. So I was moving back to the big peak just to get a turn point. But it is a fairly safe route in these conditions with strong wind. I'm using the edges of the high ground and I'm able to keep that uh, escape route of the main valley open to me at all times. And I've never put myself behind the ridge or just on top of the ridge. Always stayed in front or up above and then flicked over. Hey, sorry, I didn't film the landing. The wind is pretty strong. I mean, I was going backwards on trim, so I needed full bar to even move forward. Uh, opted to land in a nice big field out there, a plowed field rather than the goal field. <laughs> I mean, the glory is not worth it. So it's just a quick walk across to the goal and then I'm done. That was excellent. Okay, that's definitely not for everybody. Those flying conditions were marginal. Um, if they'd been any stronger, I would have gone down and landed. So that's kind of, that was my limit. For, for flatland flying, 
probably less stress and okay, but for flying in the mountains, very marginal. Uh, my tactic there was to wait in front of the ridge, well in front, so that I wasn't in the Venturi at the top of the ridge. And I was just waiting there, and then when I got a thermal, I used the thermal to just climb up into the turn point and go. That meant I knew I had, had a little bit extra height to use full bar and to get off the ridge. And I was a little bit higher out of that Venturi, so it gave me a little bit more safety. If I hadn't found those thermals, I wouldn't have gone to the turn point. Nothing to work out. I don't know where Daniel is. I didn't see him after the first turn point. I think he was walking to uh, the second turn point. I think um, Minister Langors, he must have been at the top of that when I tagged it, I guess. But being on a small wing, on a mini wing, he's not going to get the altitude that I've got there. So he's kind of stuck on that ridge. He could soar it maybe, but he's not going to get enough height to get over the back and do that glide. So that's the disadvantage of having a small wing on this sort of hike and fly racing. Even in windy conditions, you can't make the transitions. You can just glide down. So I'm going to go have a beer and wait for Daniel to come in. Give him a big round of applause. Cheers, guys. Now he's got some stiff work to keep up and to try and get into goal before the close of the course. Uh, the route finishes at seven o'clock, I think, in the evening. Um, and we only started around about midday. So he's got to keep the pedal to the metal to finish this course off. So this requires quite a level of fitness. So Daniel's got an incredible pace uphill. Um, I couldn't keep up with him going up hills and I think there he's trying to check and see if he can fly um, it's still no, way too windy uh, go. he's got to go off and yeah, go and get the turn point, turn point it, which is a pity that that section would have been nice if he could have sawed that at least um, if the wind had been you know five miles an hour less he would have been able to soar into that bowl, get the turn point and soar back out and at least fly down to the valley. But he's opted for safety, being on his own out in the mountains, taking a risk, trying to launch in very strong conditions. It's a very wise call to just hit the road and bring it home, running down the trails. 20, uh, 15 to 20 miles an hour something like that on uh, Adam's meter. It feels a bit stronger to be honest and um, gusty. But the sky looks good so uh, we're going to wait it out for a bit and then uh, give it a go. Okay. So, good. so even having a, a mini wing, Daniel's got a 16 square meter. He was hoping to fly in strong conditions and the conditions were too strong to launch from the ground. The only way to solve this puzzle was to launch from the small hill and stay high and flying, giving you the option of using the speed bar. There's no ways I would have been able to launch from this back ridge in these conditions, but I'm quite chuffed that I managed to pull that off, keep it safe and get to goal first. Hee ha! So here's the goal field. <laughs> And uh, uh, the reception committee and the organizers and the chairs and the, the fans and the TV media and all of that, the interview requests for interviews. Uh, I think I'm ahead of the organizers. <laughs> I think I got you first. Reception crew. Reception crew. Whee! And a little doggy. <laughs> That finishes off the Mini Dragon 2019. See you next year at the Dragon Race 2020 when there'll be lots more to learn, lots of fun. Hopefully the wind will be lighter. Now you know the area. There are no excuses. Get your bag light and come and join us for the race. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this windy session in Wales. 
keep your eye on the channel don't forget to subscribe hit the notifications so you get alerts of when something new comes out uh, thanks a lot to our patrons you guys rock thanks for your support and don't forget to support Flybubble by checking out the website thanks again see you next time